In this video, I'm going to give you a little introduction uh, to uh, the French IDE Baston. I'm hoping that's how you um, pronounce it, as I've switched to using it for some of my examples. Um, so this is the home page, and um, it's got two options here, console and notebook. It's very simple. Um, you don't need to log in, and in fact, you can't log in. Um, it behaves a bit like Scratch if you haven't logged in, so you can upload and download, save my uh, programs. Um, it remembers the last thing you've done, and there's a, there's also a share button here. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but you can share programs. I'm guessing it must keep a copy. Um, so the first thing to just be aware of is if, like me, you visited this the first time and you think, oh, I'll translate that uh, into English, um, so you had this kind of option uh, from your browser. Um, say no, don't, uh, because if you translate it, uh, the, the editor behaves a bit strangely. I'm guessing it's trying to recognize bits of Python as French and then translate them into English. So turn off the translation for the site. In fact, there's, apart from uh, Execute, uh, none of the buttons have any um, any text on them anyway. Um, so we've got an editor on the left, color code stuff, uh, as most IDEs do. So um, uh, and then we can run that and um, it obviously shows the output on the right hand side so layout like um, Replit or Trinket or some of those other online IDEs. Uh, what, what particularly attracted this uh, me to this in the first place is that the console still works so unlike the one uh, in Replit uh, you can do this sort of thing uh, so you can say a plus one for example and it'll, it'll, it'll work and you can inspect the values of variables and things after your program has finished running um, you can uh, change the the size just using control plus and control minus like you would uh, to zoom in on a website. It doesn't change the size of the buttons, so that's quite a useful feature. Um, if you don't like the black background, there's a button over here, uh, which is a kind of a kind of dark mode and light mode. Um, and then we've got a few other controls, so you can upload programs. I'll show you another way how to uh, to, to load programs. Uh, in a minute if you want uh, to share examples of your code. Um, so you can upload them from your computer. Um, you can download the script on the right hand side. So it will literally just download a, a, a file called script.py. It's always called that uh, into your downloads folder, but you can rename it. There's a share button. You can un kind of undo and it'll give you uh, times to go back to. Um, so that's quite a nice feature. Um, this kind of uh, broom I guess, uh, sweeps clean the area on the right hand side. Um, you can switch between the graphical view there and the console view. I'm not quite sure what the graphical view does. Uh, that's something I might investigate a bit later on. This button swaps the um, the two sides round. Um, also swaps the buttons round so to swap them back again you need to click the one over there and then the eye um, closes the console. You can get it back, but um, it's, a, it's a slightly faffy, um, so I, I won't do that just at the moment. So um, that's the basic um, stuff. It's nice and responsive. So uh, you know, if you do, um, you know, write a program that does a lot of processing, it does seem quite a bit faster than Replit to do the same kind of thing. Um, it also loads things quite quickly um, if you load them uh, either using this button or you can use the command line to load programs. So, so for example, if you want to share examples of your code or if you want to give students a kind of starter for a prim activity, um, you can add the uh, URL of the, um, of the code uh, to, the to the query string up here. So for example, I've got some um, code here um, so this is one of the examples from my website, and this is a longer example, but the reason I've chosen this uh, is because it also uses a data file. So you can load both code and files um, from the URL. So this is the URL of the, the Python code, which I've put on it just in a folder on my website, an examples folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, that's the URL of the code, and you can add it in if you just do slash uh, question mark from and it fills that bit in for you and I just need to put in the address of the, the code that I want to load so if I do that um, I, you can see that it's loaded the code into that window uh, what about if I want to add in kind of supplementary files so text files uh, or, or anything that I want to process um, you can do that as well um, so this is the um, text file that goes with that particular program and it's in a slightly different folder. I've got a folder of kind of um, supplementary files there. So I'm going to copy that and uh, there's a slightly different um, 
query string thing. So if it's if it's code you put from, and if it's a kind of supplementary text file, um, orcs. So I'm going to paste the, um, the 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 URL in there. So now I'm going to um, press enter, and you can't see you can't see where the file's gone. Um, but some of the tr trinket is the same, uh, but it does work. So if I if I run this uh, now, so I'm just going to give that a quick example. So what's it called? Let's call it capitals. Um, so um, the capital of France is. So what this is is it is basically a demonstration for the students that when you create a text file in Python, it doesn't need to be just a plain text file. It could be a CSV file, or in this case, it could output an HTML file. Um, so what you do is you put the square brackets where you want the. It's a cl close exercise, um, and then it says um, put in a list of choices. So we could go Berlin. You put an underscore in front of the one that's correct. So Paris. Um, London, Madrid, for example, and then um, press enter. I'm not going to have a second question. Enter a valid file name. Let's call it quiz.html. So in the original version in Replit, it just created this file and then it appeared in that panel on the left. What you can do is you can add a bit of extra code uh, to your Baston programs and it will actually force the download. So when I press enter now, notice it's um, forced it into the download and that's a, that's a file. Um, and there's, there's my uh, thing and I can pick, uh, if I pick the wrong answer, it colours it red. And if I pick the right answer, it colours it um, green and you, and you lose 10% of your score for each wrong answer you get. So you can you can try that if you want to, but that's just an example program. Um, and how that works is there's a, um, a library called Baston. Uh, so in the example on the web page, so if you click the thing that looks like a wheel, uh, there is a set of instructions, but obviously it's in French, but you can use Google Translate. if um, You don't need a lot of French, actually, because it turns out that lots of um, French IT words are just literal translations of the English. Um, so sorry for mouse and cart I'm air for motherboard, etc. Um, so I've imported the download function, and then at the end of my program, I've just said download, and what that does is that pops it up um, the the download notification and allows you to save it. So you can get stuff out probably, although it's difficult to see it. You can get stuff out probably more easily um, than you can in Replit. Okay, so that's writing your programs, running them using the execute button. Uh, then you can load in external programs if you want to share examples or prim starters. Um, there is one more thing. If you're going to put these on your website, um, you might find that initially uh, they won't open. And that's because of uh, a security um, measure um, called cause, cost, cross um, origin research, uh, re resource sharing, something like that. Anyway. Um, but uh, there's a way to add kind of exceptions to that. So if you're using, uh, I'm using an Apache web server. So um, in the file of examples, I've got a .ht access file uh, that contains this. And it's saying for files matching, um, Python, so Python files, text files, and there's a picture file for one of the examples. Um, then I just need to allow um, the cross origin access uh, for this particular URL. So lots of the examples online um, use a wildcard in there, but I'm only allowing that exception for that one site, uh, which is more secure. That does work. If you, that, that single line uh, works for Edge and Chrome, um, but Firefox is a bit more fussy. So I did have to do a bit more research and adding these extra two lines um, uh, gets it working in Firefox, which I'm actually using here.